In this lesson, I want to go over how to find the slope of a line, which is also known as the gradient of a line. And this should be a review because we actually covered this in more detail in our videos on linear functions. But I just want to go over a few more examples where we calculate the gradient of a line. And at the end of this video, we're going to relate that to parallel and perpendicular lines. And we'll see that we can determine whether two lines are parallel to one another or perpendicular to one another based on the slopes of those lines and the relationships between the slopes of those lines. So let's start out with an example where we are going to calculate the gradient of a line. So let's say you had two points. Your first point was when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to negative 4. So that is going to be here in terms of x and negative 4 is going to be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. So this is going to be our first point, and that is when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to negative 4. Our second point is going to be when x is equal to 6, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right here, and y is equal to 0. So here is our second point, that is when x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 0. Now we have our two points and we can join our points together with a line. Our line is going to look something like that and we could extend it in either direction but I'm just going to keep it like this because this is what's really important for us. And now to determine the slope of this line, what we are going to be calculating is rise over run. And rise over run essentially means the change in y over the change in x. Rise is going to represent our change in y because our y-axis is going to go up or down. So if we're moving up our y-axis, we can think of it as rising. And our run is going to be our change in the x-axis because we can think of run as our change from left to right. So our slope, which we denote as m, that is going to be the general symbol for slope. Our slope is going to be equal to rise over run. And what that means is that we're going to be looking at the change in y over the change in x. So we can put this into even more clear terms. The change in y is just going to be equal to y2 minus y1, that is the change in y, and the change in x is just going to be x2 minus x1, that is the change in x. So here we can label our two points. Here we have x1, y1, and here we have x2, y2. So to calculate our slope, we are going to take y2 minus y1, so we have 0 minus negative 4, 0 minus negative 4, over 6 minus 0. And we know when we have two minuses here, that becomes a plus, so this is going to become 4 over 6, and we can simplify this to 2 thirds. So our slope is going to be equal to 2 thirds. Let's go over one more example of calculating the slope of a line. So our first point is going to be when x is equal to negative 6 and y is equal to negative 3. So here we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 4, 5, and 6. Here's negative 6. And over here is negative 3. So this is going to be our first point. When x is equal to negative 6 and y is equal to negative 3. Our second point is going to be when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 9. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I'll put in one more notch here for 9. So here we have x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 9. And if we were to join these two points with a line, it would look something like that. And again, we are going to calculate our slope, m, as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I should mention that we can do it this way, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but we can also calculate the slope as y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. 
as long as we are consistent, which means if we're doing y1 minus y2, we have to do x1 minus x2. We can't calculate it as y1 minus y2 over x2 minus x1. So as long as we are consistent in the order in which we are doing this, both are going to give us the right answer. So if you're using y2 first, you have to use x2 first. And if you're using y1 first, you have to use x1 first. For now, I am just going to stick to y2 and x2 as our first numbers. So we can label these two points. Here we have x1, here we have y1, and here we have x2, and here we have y2. So our slope is going to be 9 minus minus 3 over 0 minus minus 6. That is going to be equal to 12 over 6, which is 2. So the slope of this line or the gradient of this line is 2. So now that we know how to calculate the gradient of a line, I want to talk about how that relates to parallel and perpendicular lines. We know that parallel lines are going to be lines which are the same distance apart and are never going to cross or touch. And what that means is that if we have two lines which are always going to maintain the same distance apart and they are never going to touch, like this line and this line, these lines are going to continue on and they are never going to cross each other. This distance between them remains the same. And when we have two lines like this, that means that they need to have the same slope. If they're never going to meet and stay the same distance apart, they have to have the same slope. So parallel lines are going to have equal slopes. Their slopes will be the same. So if we are to determine whether two lines are parallel, if we know the slope of both lines and the slope of both lines are equal, we can conclude that those lines are parallel to one another. Perpendicular lines are going to be different in that we know that perpendicular lines are going to be lines that are going to intersect with one another and they're going to intersect to create a 90 degree angle. Intersect at 90 degree angles. And the interesting thing about the slopes of perpendicular lines is that the slopes of both of those lines are going to be the negative inverses of one another. So our slopes are negative inverses of one another. And what that means is that if line 1 has a slope of m, then line 2 is going to have a slope of negative 1 over m. These are negative inverses of one another. So in order for us to determine whether two lines are perpendicular, we can calculate both of their slopes. And if the slopes are negative inverses of one another, then we can conclude that our lines are perpendicular. Another thing to note about perpendicular lines is that the product of the two slopes is going to be negative 1. So let's say these were our two slopes of our lines. If we were to multiply these together, we would multiply m with negative 1 over m. That would be negative m over m, which is equal to negative 1. So the product of our two slopes of perpendicular lines is going to be equal to negative 1. And that is just because of the fact that the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative inverses of one another. For this to be true, their product has to be equal to negative 1. So let's go over a couple of examples and see if we can determine whether our lines are parallel or perpendicular based on their slopes. So let's say we are told that line A passes through the points 2 and 5 and negative 1 and negative 1. Line B passes through negative 4 and 6 and 2 and 3. And we have to determine whether these two lines, line A and line B, are parallel or perpendicular. So let's start out by calculating the slope of line A. So the coordinates of two of our points that this line passes through are when x is equal to 2 and when y is equal to 5. 
and when x is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to negative 1. So slope of line A is going to be equal to y2 minus y1. So I'm going to choose this as y2 and this as y1. So we have negative 1 minus 5 over x2 minus x1. So since this was y2, this has to be x2. So we have negative 1 minus 2. And if we were to calculate that, minus 1 minus 5 is minus 6 and minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. So our answer is going to be 2. So our slope of line A is equal to 2. Now we can do the same thing for line B. Here we have our two sets of coordinates for line B. So for calculating the slope of line B, we can choose this is y2 again. So y2 is equal to 3 minus y1, which is 6, 3 minus 6, over x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is negative 4. That is going to be equal to, well, 3 minus 6 is negative 3, and 2 minus minus 4 is 6. So this is equal to negative 1 half. And what can we notice about these two slopes? Our slope A is equal to 2, and slope B is equal to negative 1 over 2. Well, we can see that these two slopes are going to be the negative inverses of one another. If we were to inverse this, it would become 1 half, and the negative inverse is negative 1 half. If we were to inverse this, it would become negative 2. And the negative inverse of negative 2 is 2. So we can see that these slopes are the negative inverses of one another. Therefore, we can say that these lines are going to be perpendicular to one another because their slopes are the negative inverses of one another. And let's go over one more example. So we are told that line A passes through these two coordinates, when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 3, and when x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 7. Line B passes through these two coordinates, when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to negative 4, and when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 2. And we have to determine whether these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So what we can do is we can start out with line A and calculate the slope just like in our last example. So here we have x1 and y1, and here we have x2 and y2. So if we were to calculate the slope of A, we're going to take y2 minus y1, so 7 minus 3, over x2 minus x1, so 3 minus 1. That is going to be equal to 7 minus 3 is 4, and 3 minus 1 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So our first line has a slope of 2. Now we can do the same thing with line B, our second line. Here are two coordinates. Here we have x1, here we have y1, here we have x2, and here we have y2. So if we were to calculate slope of b, we do y2 minus y1, which is 2, negative 2, sorry, minus negative 4 over 2 minus 1. And that is going to be equal to, well, negative 2 minus a minus 4 means negative 2 plus 4, which is equal to 2. And 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. And 2 divided by 1 is just 2. So both of these lines have a slope of 2. They have the same slope. Their gradients are equal. And what that means is that we can conclude that these two lines are parallel to one another because their slopes are equal. So that is another way that we can determine whether we have parallel or perpendicular lines by calculating their slopes and seeing the relationship between those two slopes. If they have the same slope, the lines are parallel, and if their slopes are the negative inverses of one another, the lines are perpendicular.